Greetings. <clears throat> so, uh, just a quick update on my eye condition. I have what's called open angle glaucoma, and it's a problem that is caused by ocular hypertension. There is no cure, and all I can do is treat it. And I treat it with a particular eye drop solution. Um, the side effects are terrible, but if, if it comes to choosing between the side effects and going blind, I'll take the side effects. So there you have it. Um, I'm not going to be producing videos like I was in the past, but I'm doing this video because somebody asked me. <coughs> excuse me. Somebody asked me about this uh, limit theory and proofs using inequalities and so it's easier for me just to answer it this way rather than typing everything up so let me begin by saying that I looked at two videos and these two videos are this one here by the math sorcerer and the other one is by root math so both of them reach the same conclusion Namely that, uh, namely that you choose a certain epsilon, I mean a certain delta, which is wrong by the way, because uh, according to mainstream doctrine, you need to choose an epsilon first and then find a delta that works for it. So in this example here, I actually uh, look at x squared and I show you that what they told you in that solution is actually false. So if, for example, uh, epsilon is equal to 1, then uh, the deltas that will work are all the deltas inside here, right? In other words, uh, delta will be 0 0.23607 approximately, and all the deltas in here will work according, accordingly. If you go outside this range, so even some of them in this range will not work, as you see here. Um, uh, if you go over here, this here is the last, uh, for example, your epsilon might be within range, but the delta is not, okay, so it has to be, it has to be less than this value, otherwise you'll get the incorrect answer. So I'm going to give you a link to this applet and also a link to the articles, so for example, this article here which shows you how to find the relationship between epsilon and delta and also this article which is a general theorem that means you only have to prove this once and it works for every particular limit okay so <clears throat> coming back to this here uh, of course this uh, general limit theorem says the the further away you move from the limit the greater the area of this circle and the closer you get the closer you get to the limit so anyway so over here if we had to <coughs> see what uh, if we had to try and get a delta of one it would put us right outside of the as you can see delta at the bottom here is 0.828 if we try and make it bigger it falls right outside the the range in fact it goes even into the negative section of the axis so we don't want that so let's just stick with epsilon is equal to one and you can look at the method and this method is explained in my article okay so it's explained here I'll put a link to it so that's all you have to do to find a relationship you just follow this pattern and you can clearly ignore the gibberish I put a comment here I don't know how long it's gonna last but this is the comment and I will also put this comment in the details section. This person here has already removed my comment. Somebody called the mass sorcerer, so I'm not going to post it there again. But mainstream academics do not understand limit theory. A hundred percent of them do not understand limit theory, and they're teaching it wrong, and students are becoming disca discouraged with all the garbage that they have to learn eventually dropping out of their math courses um, and it's such a shame really because it needn't be this way so you can look at 
the detail section of this video and see what's involved and if you have any questions just one at a time you could send me an email that's all I have to say so I hope uh, to the student who asked me this I hope this answers your questions I'm sorry that I cannot write out everything for you but you can understand if you look at the details section download the applets and read the articles I wrote I'm John Gabriel goodbye